Yo, I got 10 prize picks player props to make money tonight. So we're going to be looking at college basketball, NHL, NBA, and honestly, let's just go ahead. Let's get into it. So my first pick is right here. Let's actually wait for the odds jam screen to load for a second, and then we'll pull up Terry Rozier. So this is my first pick. Really like it. We're getting Rozier over six assists on prize picks. Underdog Fantasy and all the sports books, you can see they have Rozier's line at six and a half. Pinnacle Sportsbook, which is right here. So under the odds jam column, we just duplicate pinnacle odds. But you can see here, some books have the under favored for Rozier over under six and a half. Some books like Pinnacle, they have the over favored, right? Pinnacle is a very sharp sports book, known to be the sharpest bookmaker out there. So long story short, you know, there's dozens of data points all telling us, yo, Rozier's line should be set at six and a half. Underdog Fantasy, Prize Picks is direct competitor as the line at six and a half. You have Pinnacle, who has the over slightly favored. Then you have most sports books, like you can see DraftKings, Bet365. They have the under slightly juiced, right? The under is minus 125 and the over is minus 105. So the under is slightly favored on these sports books. But long story short, looking across the market, it's pretty clear. Prize picks is too low, right? So we want to take the over. And the benefit, right, the value of getting over six versus over six and a half is, right, if Rozier has exactly six assists, we're going to push, right? We're going to tie in our five flex on prize picks will become a four pick flex. Whereas anyone who places their bet on a sports book on Rozier over six and a half assists, if Rozier has six assists, they're losing, right? So that's the first play I ended up going with. Then we can just keep going with this screen. Here's another play. So let's wait for college basketball to load, and then we'll have to wait for um, player rebounds to load as well. So what we can do is we can go over to the positive EV tool. Well, we're waiting on these to load. Well, actually, here it is. So here we can see Xavier Castaneda, right? So this is in Kent State versus Akron. His line on prize picks is 20 half, right? His line on underdog is 19 half. And his line on FanDuel is 19 half with the under heavily favored, right? You can see on FanDuel, they're pricing the under 19 and a half points at minus 130. And they're giving you the over at plus 102. So clear value, right? You have FanDuel, which is a much more efficient betting market, right? Right? It's a sports book, more sophisticated pricing than prize picks. They have the line at 19 and a half with the under favored. And Price Picks has the line at 20 and a half. So Price Picks is way too high, right? You have Price Picks at 20 half. Their direct competitor, Underdog, is at 19 and a half. And then you have FanDuel, the only sportsbook data point, telling us, yo, the under 19 and a half should be favored. And we're getting under 20 half, which is even better, right? So this is how sharp sports bettors think. You know, you're looking through the market. And here, granted, we don't have as much confidence, let's say, in this play. There's only three books posting odds on Xavier uh, Castaneda points, whereas, you know, some player props, like you can see Tumani Kamara, there's, do you know, not dozens, there's eight sports books posting odds on Kamara, whereas here, for Xavier Castaneda, there's only three books. But regardless, prize picks at 20 half, underdog at 19 half. FanDuel at 19 half with the under favored, we have enough confidence, in my opinion, to be like, yeah, getting the under 20 half is a play with an edge. Now, this play I absolutely love. This is probably the best play we're going to go through. It's another college basketball one, and it's right here on John Tanji. So what you're going to notice is all sports books. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, this is from the odds jam screen. This screen, you know, you can look at any market. I'm, ma I'm mainly looking at player props, um, especially obviously in these prize picks videos. Prize picks is basically just player props on that platform. So what you're going to notice is prize picks has his line at four and a half rebounds. All the sports books are at five and a half, right? Now, granted, the sports books have the under five and a half juice to around minus 170 odds. So you may be like, well, sportsbooks have the under five and a half favored. So why would you want to get over four and a half? But what you have to remember is these jumps from like four and a half to five and a half rebounds. So if we just look at Kelly Oubre, right, he's a similar player. His line in the NBA is five and a half rebounds. Or you can look at Gordon Hayward as well. I mean, you can look at either of them, but you can see the jump from four and a half to five and a half rebounds 
is an 121 cent swing, right? FanDuel is one of the only sports books that offer the, that offers these alternate player prop markets. And you can see right here, they're giving you the over four and a half rebounds at minus 275. And the over five and a half, they're pricing at minus 154. So that's an 121 cent swing. Because a lot of people will be like, eh, four and a half versus five and a half. You know, there's not that much of a probability he ends up on exactly five rebounds. It's like, yeah, there is, right? The distribution is centered around him having five rebounds right? That's the most likely outcome. It's probably happening 20 or so percent of the time. So these jumps, these changes in the odds are pretty big. So you can assume like, okay, imagine if there were an 120 cent swing, you know, um, looking at the sports book odds. Well, if there was an 120 cent swing, they'd have the over four and a half rebounds at like minus 190, right? If there were an 120 cent swing, DraftKings wouldn't be giving you, so there are over five and a half is plus 130 odds. So if you, you know, kind of follow FanDuel and you say it's an 121 cent jump, then, you know, their over four and a half rebounds would be roughly minus 190. That would be an 120 cent swing. Minus 190 to plus 130, right? And we know in a prize picks five flex play, so is this the math I wanted? Yep. So in a prize picks five flex, we know we're getting minus 119 odds. So we're always looking for value at minus 119. So long story short, you know, four and a half versus five and a half. These are big jumps, big changes in the odds. So we want to be all over this over four and a half for John Tanji, right? Now a play like this, right? Khalil Shababs, prize picks has his line at five and a half. Sportsbooks have his line at five and a half. It's not like sportsbooks have the over or the under heavily favored. So there's no play, right? That's somewhere we want to hold off. And here's another example, right? Brandon Johnson, Prize picks has his line at seven and a half. Underdog has his line at seven and a half. Three sportsbook data points all have his line at seven and a half. Five data points all setting the exact same odds. There's no value, no discrepancy in the market to take advantage of. So we just want to hold off, right? We don't want to play Brandon Johnson. So as a sharp better, you know, I'm waking up in a given day and I'm hunting through the market and looking for value, right? Like I'm trying to find plays like there was one here I wanted to show you guys, Isaiah Stevens. Prize picks has his line at 29 and a half. You have two sportsbook data points, DraftKings and 10 bet, who have his line at 30 half. So you'd want to lean to bet the over on prize picks, right? The over 29 half. So the screen is really useful. I mean, just, you know, I literally just like scan through it pretty quickly. You know, the whole point of odds jam is there's literally, if you look at just this one NBA game, you know, there's tens of thousands of odds kind of probably on FanDuel just for the NBA tonight, there's probably tens of thousands of odds. You look at all these alternate markets. So it's not possible that you can scan through all these lines manually, compare it to prize picks, compare it to underdog. So the entire point of Odds Jam is to try to make this data, you know, slightly easier to interpret. So it's easier to find value as a sharp better, right? There's millions of odds across all sports books. If you add them together, DraftKings, FanDuel, Bet Online, Bovada, Prize Picks. Right, Odds Jam is pulling in, I think something like, you know, 178 sports books are on Odds Jam, a lot. So Odds Jam's pulling in, you know, 50,000 odds, 20,000 odds from all these different books, updating it in real time. And the whole point of the screen is allowing you to quickly scan through where all books are setting lines, not a ton of books set college basketball player prop lines, but kind of scan through and just be like, okay, are there any discrepancies in the market? You know, for John Tanji, um, you can see here for his PRAs, books are at 22 half, prize picks is at 22 half, not really any value, nothing we want to go with, right? So we went through the screen. I have some other plays um, from the positive expected value tool. So this is probably the most popular tool on Odds Jam. And if you're new to sports betting, this is definitely the tool I recommend you get started with. Um, so what this tool does is, again, it's reading in all these lines from FanDuel, DraftKings, 178 sports books. Um, and you can select, of course, the books you're using. And it just points out to you discrepancies, right? What are the biggest discrepancies in sportsbook odds? Where are sportsbooks slipping up? So this, right, when we're looking at the screen, we're trying to find plays like the John Tanji play where sportsbooks have his line at five and a half and prize picks is at four and a half, right? So you can see the first play I went with is actually right here. Um... So Rozier over six assists, this play we discussed, right, from the odds jam screen, Xavier Castaneda and John Tanji. 
So we have three plays that we discussed on the screen. These two other plays we'll discuss, 400 to win 4,000, right? We've gone through the math, the payouts of a prize picks, five flex. You're getting minus 119 implied odds. So we know any five flex, right? It doesn't matter if you take overs or unders. The odds on prize picks don't change, right? Like if you take overs or unders, if we switched all of these to being unders, right? So if we switch Rozier to be under six assists, like our payout would be the same. And that's why when you're looking at odds jam, you're going to notice prize picks, there's always the exact same odds for the over and the under, right? Jack Hughes over minus 119, Jack Hughes under minus 119. And again, that's because the way prize picks works, right? They're not varying your payouts like you can see right here. 20 to win 60, they're not varying your payouts depending on if you select overs or unders. You're going to notice this to win column will never change. Doesn't matter if you switch picks, right? Any two leg entry you create is 20 to win 60, and it's no different for a five flex. So here's the first one I went through, and five flexes are mathematically optimal, right? That's why you're going to notice. So this I just canceled. I didn't mean to place four, but why almost all of my entries are going to be five pick entries. So let's keep going through. Um, so again, Odd Jam's reading in these lines. It's putting a minus 119 to every leg on prize picks. So again, prize picks, you don't want to go with the two pick power plays. Two pick power plays mean you're getting minus 137 odds. You never want to be placing. You'll notice I'm never giving out or placing two pick power plays, three pick power plays. They're horrible. You want to be going with five or six flex. Those are mathematically optimal right? But you're getting the best implied odds at minus 119. And it makes all the difference. Like a lot of people will be like, oh, minus 137 versus minus 119. It doesn't make that much of a difference. Imagine if I made you, you know, that's double the juice, first of all, right? 19 cents of juice here, right? 38 cents of juice, however you want to think about it. 74 cents of width in this market, 74 cent width, 38 cent width, right? So you can notice like, these are big differences. And as a sharp better, you know, you're like a savvy investor. You're looking for value. You're looking for an edge. You're looking for a leg up. You're not going to win every bet. I mean, I talk about this all the time. Um, and I don't, you know, talk about the same thing to be arrogant or whatever. But like my ROI last year in 2022 was just 4.44%. So it's all about getting better odds, right? I had 3,065 losses or wins, 3,916 losses. So a lot of bets all placed with an edge, right? An edge and yielded a lot of profit. But again, if you're getting ripped off and you're placing two pick power plays, your edge gets wiped away, right? In sports betting, it's not a get rich quick scheme. At least what I talk about isn't a get rich quick scheme, right? It's hustling for these 4% edges, like you can see right here, 4.45% profit margin on a daily basis, right? So 4.45% profit margin daily. If you're betting every single day, I mean, you can think about it, your bankroll will go up 135% based on how much you're betting each day, right? Like this bet for every $100 I put on it, you know, I'm getting 445 in profit margin, 4.45% profit margin or edge, right? In a percent form. So then you just multiply that by your stake to get your profit margin in dollars. So long story short, let's say on prize picks every single day, I'm able to wager, you know, $2,500. Um, so let's just say this is the case, right? So the, let's say this is what I'm able to stake. My daily ROI is 4.45%. So my monthly ROI is going to be this times 30, you know, 30 days in a month. So basically in one month on prize picks, assuming I'm betting $2,500 a day, at a one point, uh, at a four point four five percent edge, in one month I'm gonna earn twenty five hundred bucks times one point three three five. I'm gonna earn three k a month on Prize Picks, just staking twenty five hundred dollars on profitable plays like this one, Jack Hughes over three and a half shots on goal. Granted, I end up taking some of the lower profit margin ones as well. Like you can see this Devin Booker, Martin Nikas play, those are lower profit margin. Again, you know. These plays, so you can see the Devin Booker, the Martin Nikas play there in this prize picks five flex. So again, you know, these plays still have an edge. It's not like every play you're going to get is going to be a 4.45% profit margin on prize picks, but this is obviously the top one. And the reason it's so clearly good is again, you're getting minus 119 in a prize picks five flex, 
Look at the odds on the sports books. FanDuel has this over heavily favored around minus 148. DraftKings, minus 140. Bet Rivers, minus 150. Bet Online, a very sharp offshore sports book, minus 167. Right in the market is crossed. This is arbitrage. You know, you can get the under, betting 100 to win 128. Or on prize picks, the implied odds on the over is betting 119 to win back 100. So this is a crossed market. So you'll notice all sports books have the over heavily favored. Pinnacle Sportsbook, known to be the sharpest bookmaker in the world, they have the over at minus 169, right? So we're getting 50 cents of improvement. Pinnacle is saying this over should be priced at roughly minus 170. And you got to remember, sportsbooks imply win probabilities through their odds. So on Pinnacle, they're saying, yo, the over should be priced at minus 169 and the under will give you plus 126, right? So the more juice the over is, the more likely the sportsbook thinks, you know, that the over is to occur. So if we look at that online or DraftKings, for example, they have the over favored, but they're only juiced to minus 140. Pinnacle's juiced all the way to minus 169. So if you put in DraftKings market, you know, so basically according to Pinnacle, Jack Hughes is 58.68% to go over. So it's a great play to include in our five flex because again, prize picks isn't varying payouts. If we go here, right, prize picks isn't varying payouts depending on if we select overs or unders. Unlike the sports books, they're not varying payouts depending on if we select over or under. So the easiest way to make money on prize picks is you just look for spots where books are telling you, yo, this over should be heavily, heavily juiced. And you're getting it at minus 119, and then you tee off and you pick off prize picks, right? We're getting 50 cents of value to the sharpest bookmaker out there. And Bet Online, Bovada, two other, you know, sharper offshore sports books are pricing this around minus 160. So a lot of value there. Tatum, Morant, Mark Williams, I mean, literally just following the data. I always say this, I never bet with my gut. A lot of people will be like, yo, you didn't even talk about the players. It's like, well, it's baked into the market. You don't have to know anything about Jack Hughes. I don't know anything about Jack Hughes. I don't plan on watching this game. All I know is I have dozens of data points. This is just New York sports books. If you switch your state, you can see more books available to you or if you select more here. But you're going to see, like, we have extremely high confidence that this play is profitable. I mean, we're getting, you know, 34 cents of improvement or 36 cents of improvement to um, points bets market. So points bet, you know, one sports book setting lines. To FanDuel, we're getting, you know, 29 cents of improvement, 21 cents of improvement to DraftKings. To Bet Rivers, we're getting 31 cents. So long story short, you look at every sports book, every book is telling you, you know, FanDuel saying, yo, you should be hammering this at minus 119. Bet Online is saying, yo, this should be minus 167. You should be hammering this at minus 119. So we have dozens of data points all telling us to hammer this line at minus 119. So all these plays, you know, we're either from the EV tool, from the screen. Here's the first five, and then we have Jack Hughes over, Tatum under, right? Literally following the data, Jaw over, Mark Williams over, Caruso under, boom, boom, boom. All data, 400 to win four grand, 400 to win four grand. Um, and then I think... This play is already looking pretty good. Well, I can reload it very quickly. So I think this Jason Day play cashed. I'm not sure, but long story short, a lot of good plays open for tonight. Let's make some money, guys.